Bienvenidos, Ushamdi, and welcome University of Maryland Global Campus learners from the CMIT 456 Section 6380 course for the fall 2021 semester. This is the Cisco Networking Academy's CCMP and RC version 8 course curriculum. And in this Packet Tracer activity and tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Packet Tracer 22.2.1, where our focus is going to be on the authentication configuration of AAA. Now remember, AAA stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting, three distinct services that we can configure on Cisco devices. However, this activity, again, the focus is on the authentication piece, and this is one of the most important pieces with respect to AAA. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look on how we might configure AAA. So here is our activity. Again, over to the right, we have our addressing table and the instructions. We're going to be configuring the AAA new model, right? And this is in contrast to the old model of AAA, which was just simply the local passwords that we would configure on devices or on device lines, like the console line or the VTY lines. And that would be sort of cons considered your old school configuration. So we've got some console and enable secret passwords. Again, these should be old hat by this point, Cisco con PA 55 for the console and Cisco EN PA 55 for the enable secret. Now, I like how they added this note in here. There's a couple very important notes added in this activity. And this is one of those notes. We're using the secret password configuration for the devices that we're going to be configuring. However, you would want to be using the script hashing algorithm on devices where that is supported. And again, I will show you a couple examples of that because we've got some devices that are going to be running 15.7 uh, code that we're going to be messing around with here shortly. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Part one, configure local AAA authentication. Again, the new model using AAA. And that is what we're going to be doing <clears throat> right now. However, we're first going to test some connectivity. So let's make sure that we have reachability throughout the environment. So can I ping over to PCB 192.168.2.3? And whoops, sorry. And we get that because we have a typo in there. So 192.168.2.3, that is going to be PCB's address and PCC is 3.3. So let's go ahead and scroll over here. And then let's take a look at PCA to PCC, so 192.168.3.3. And again, we may lose a packet here timing out because we've got an ARP request that's got to fly out there before we've got connectivity. And then finally, from PCB, let's go ahead and ping 192.168.3.3, which is PCC. So we have all of the, the connectivity and reachability that we're looking for in the environment. Next, we're going to configure a username of admin1 with a secret password of admin1pa55. And this is all going to be done on router number one. So here we are in user exec. We're going to try to get into privilege exec. And this is where we're going to see we need that Cisco ENPA55 password to transition us from user exec into privilege exec, where we can now get into global config. And we're going to be simply configuring a username admin1 with a capital A in the admin1 name. And then we're going to use a secret password of admin1pa55. And what you're going to see is on router2, it's going to be admin2, and then admin2pa55 and router3, so forth and so on. And you might be wondering, how is it that I might know this? Well, this activity is actually identical to the activity in the EN core course which is activity 26.2.5 in the EN core course. In an RC, it's 22.2.1, but it's the exact same activity. And I'm also going to be stressing that they're going to show us the old school way to do the TACAX config. I will show you the new school way to do that. So we drop in our username, admin1, secret password. Now, this next step is very important. We have to enable... AAA. If I was to say AAA authentication and do a question mark, <clears throat> you can see we have some options here. However, 
none of these options will be legitimate or will work unless we say AAA new model. And that's it. That's the whole command. And think of it as maybe when you're doing port security, when you say switch port, port security, and you hit enter. If you don't do switch port, port security, and hit enter, then all of the other switch port, port security commands you enter in are not active. And the same is true here. We have to say AAA new model in order to get things set up and rolling as we would like to see. So we've enabled AAA on R1 and it wants us to configure the AAA authentication for the console login to use the local database. Well, to do that, we would say AAA authentication login. And now here's where we get to the confusing part for many learners is you see that you can do a named authentication list. Now this is gonna be, what follows here is gonna be the method list. In other words, if I was to juxtapose those two terms or reverse those terms, it's the list of methods that we're going to attempt to use to authenticate to this device on the console line. And that's why they call it the method list. It's just simply a list of methods. And we're gonna see that here in a second. Now, we can use the default list, which is simply using the word default, or we could customize it. However, here you'll notice that it says step four, enable AAA on router one and configure AAA authentication for the console login to use the default method list. And that's our key, that if it says use the default method list, we put the default keyword in there. Now, in this default method list, we could put in different methods. We could say, use the enable password to get logged into the console line. We could say to use a group, and that would be a TACAX group or a radius group. And I say TACAX, it's TACAX plus, but I just simply say TACAX. So whenever I say TACAX, assume I'm talking about TACAX plus. We could use the local database. So again, the username we just created, admin1, with the secret password of admin 1PA55, if we say local, we'd be using the local user database. Or we could say none, meaning no authentication at all, which we're gonna avoid in this activity. So it says enable AAA on router one and configure authentication for the console login to use the default method list. So I'm gonna say default, and then let's go ahead and put in here local to use that local user database entry. And you can see we end up with four percentage points there. <clears throat> Excuse me, and again, that's why they had us create that account. Well, now we need to verify the user exec, right? Not privilege exec, user exec. If I say end, we're in user uh, privilege exec. When I write mem, I'm gonna save the configuration, we're gonna exit out. Now remember, this connection in Packet Tracer here, this is a console connection to router one. So when I hit enter, we should now get the username prompt, which we did not get before. Now, I'm showing you this because you're probably saying, well, wait a second, you never went onto the console line. And here's why I'm showing this. Now, I'm just gonna type in, oops, sorry. I'm just gonna type in admin one, and I'm gonna say admin one PA 55. Now, I want you to watch what happens here in this activity. It works. How is it possible that that worked? Well, let's go take a look here. And let's say Cisco ENPA55, whoops, Cisco ENPA55. And if we go down here to the end, you'll notice, and I, I found this is sort of like a, it's a little snafu with Packet Tracer because I didn't complete the configuration. So we've got this password here. That is not the password I typed in on the console line. The password I typed in was for admin one. However, the console line doesn't know to use local authentication. It thinks it should be using that password. So again, if you run into this, this is like a little packet tracer you know, behavior here. What we needed to put in here, whoops, what we needed to put in here to finish the activity was to say line con zero, and we could say no password, Cisco con PA 55, and we could pull that off. And I could say login authentication. And here's where we put in either the AAA method list that we've named when that's what that word stands for. Cause I could call it, you know, like con underscore, 
you know, AAA underscore login or whatever, if I customized it, but I didn't, I used default. And that's what we can put here. And you can see, we ended up picking some points up for that. So now let's run this again. And I'm gonna say write mem, I'm gonna exit out. I'm gonna come back in. We're gonna say admin one, admin one PA 55, and it works. So if for whatever reason you forget to go to the console line, and I, again, I had a learner that this happened to, they said, well, I never put anything on the console line. I didn't get the points for it. I'm missing some points, but yet it works. And this is the problem. Again, this is sort of like this little snafu where they've got a console password set. It's not the same as admin one, yet we get to log in with admin one, even though we're not telling it to use the local triple or the default AAA method list. So again, that kind of cleans that up and Cisco ENPA 55. And if I was to say show run section line con again, that is what we would need there on the console line, that login authentication default. Okay, so now that we've taken care of that and we've covered the semantics behind what, again, what I feel is sort of odd behavior, we're now gonna configure the SSH. Now, here is where learners are also losing points because the domain name is not what they tell you to set it to. CCNASecurity.com is not the correct domain name here in this activity. So watch what happens. Our completion percentage is at 15. If I was to say IP domain name, CCNASecurity.com, security.com, <clears throat> excuse me, and hit enter, you can see in the lower right-hand corner, the completion percentage stays at 15% because that is not what they're looking for. And this is the same behavior as activity 2625 in the EN core course. The actual domain name is ccmp underscore v8.com. Yes, that is not something you're probably gonna be guessing off the top of your head for whatever reason. So that is what the domain name should be. Now watch our completion percentage go from 15 to 19. So that is four percentage points. So if you get to 96%, and you can't figure out what the four points are that you're missing, this is probably it if you followed the activity step by step. So now that we've got the right domain name in there, let's go ahead and set our crypto key up here. And this is the easy part, crypto key gener whoops, sorry. generate RSA. We hit enter and put 1024. And again, we don't pick up any points for that. However, that is the correct command. Now you may wanna say IPSSH version two. And again, you're not gonna get points for that, but that is a must on real Cisco routers when you're doing the configuration. You wanna use version two. We should see, uh, I would think a message here. Oh, there we, I'm sorry, it was above it. Kicked in right away there. So it enabled 199, and that is very vulnerable to attack. So an exploit. So we wanna make it IPSSH version two. Again, no points, but just a little value add there when you're making your configuration changes. All right, so now we're gonna configure a named list. So we use the default list when we did the authentication on the console line. Now we're going to be using a custom name list. And in all honesty, this is exactly what I do. I never use the default. I always use custom names so that it's very clear what the AAA authentication and authorization and accounting lines are actually being used for on which lines are they being applied. All right, well, let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to say AAA Authentication, and remember, we're working on authentication. This is our focus, not accounting, not authorization. So AAA authentication for logging in. And again, if I take a step back here, you could set this up if you're doing PPP. You could also set it up for the enable password. However, we're talking about logging into the device, right? And this is really the strong suit of TACAX with Cisco. So we say login, and this is where you're gonna see word and default again. Well, the first time we pick default here, we're gonna say SSH dash, and then in all caps, or all caps login, and all caps for everything that we have here. Now, it says authenticate logins using local triple A. And again, we're still using the local database. So I'm gonna go ahead and say local. And configure the VTY lines to use the named a, uh, AAA method and only, and this is a key here, and only allow SSH. Now, if I remember correctly, you're going to end up with like 19 um, 
percentage points for the transport input SSH on this activity. So we'll see what happens here, but we should see a pretty big bump in the score when we get onto the VTY line. So again, AAA authentication login, SSH dash login. And again, that's in all caps. And we're gonna say local. Now I'm gonna do a question mark here because this also deserves some conversation. You're not limited to one method, right? You could say, okay, check these, check this radius group. Then if those are unreachable, check the TACAX group. If those are unreachable, then use the local database. If that doesn't work, then use uh, the enable password, right? You can have a list and that's why they call it a method list. It's a list of the methods that you're going to, to take and try in the order they're listed here in order to authenticate to the device. So you're not, you're not limited to a single method. You can put multiple methods. However, here for this right now, they're just showing us a single method, which is local. So we'll hit enter. We pick up four points there. Now is when we get to go into, let's say do show run line uh, and include uh, line VTY. And I think it's only four. So we're gonna say line VTY zero to four. And once we're in here, uh, and actually, let me say do show run because I think they've got a password set here as well. Yeah, so they've got this Cisco VTY PA55. Well, let's go ahead and say no password Cisco VTY PA55. We no longer need that because we're getting ready to set the AAA authentication. And we would do that by saying, sorry, login authentication. Now, remember, default is if we're using the default setup, which is the same as the custom one, you know, in all honesty, this SSH dash login is going to do the exact same thing that the default method list is doing. It's just that here they're focusing on, hey, you can create a custom name for your method list. And this is going to, and ours is SSH dash login. And again, that's it. That's the command right there. So we hit enter, we pick up, I think it was 19 points for that. And watch this. Transport input SSH. This should take us to 61% if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so it bumped us. So those two commands were worth 19 percentage points each. And that takes care of that configuration. So let's say end and let's say write mem. Let's save our config just in case. And now they want us to verify the SSH configuration on router one from the prompt of PCA. Now, this is also where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, because this is the number one CCNA security mistake that would get made. And it's the following. So they would say SSH minus one, because doesn't that look like an L? And in documentation, when you look at the command in, in Packet Tracer, when you see the instructions sometimes, when learners see this, they think it's a one. So watch what happens if I say SSH minus one, admin one, and then 192.168.1.1. And that is the inside gig interface right here on router one. And it comes back and it says invalid command. And then learners run it again. And they think maybe I've got the wrong IP. Maybe else something else is wrong. And then you it typically end up with an email saying, hey, SSH doesn't work on PCA. It does. You have to say SSH minus L. And take a look at how, I mean, that is very difficult. You can see the very top of the L is, I think, the only different part where the one, it kind of comes down at a slight angle and the L is just straight across. But, you know, at first glance, or if you're just reading the instructions, trying to figure out what am I doing here, you might mistake the L for the number one. So when I say SSH minus L, there we go, it works. And then we're going to say admin one PA 55. And we are now on router one. Can I get into privilege exec mode? You absolutely can. Cisco ENPA 55. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we're in privilege exec. So that is going to do it for local AAA new model using the new model, which is AAA, right? We're using AAA new model here where we're focusing on authentication, authorization, and accounting. All right, so that takes care of that component of this activity. We're now on to part number three, where we're going to be using server-based 
authentication. And what that means is we've got a TACAC server or we have a RADIUS server. In this case, we have both. So let's dive in and knock this out. So step one, we're gonna configure a backup local database entry called admin, right? Now, I think that's, again, this is like a little typo here. They say called admin, but they tell you to call it admin two. So I think that there probably should be a two right up here. But um, let's move on, right? So don't think that it's just admin. So I'm going to get into, oops, sorry, I typed that wrong, Cisco ENPA55. And then let's get into global config. And again, very important that you put this backup local pass, uh, username and password on your devices so that if something goes wrong with your AAA config, you can still get logged in. So we're going to call this um, username admin2 secret. And the secret is admin to PA55. Now, here is what they're talking about with this script. And let's take a quick little sidebar here. So when I say username, if I was to say, you know, Travis and do a question mark, you can see I can do password, which is type seven. We don't want anything to do with that. Or I could say secret, which is gonna be an MD5 hash or a type five password. Now, both of those should be avoided at all costs and whenever possible. And script is the algorithm that should be used. In fact, if I was to fire up uh, my secure CRT here, and oops, sorry, we did not want to go out and check that. If I wanted to fire up secure CRT, and let's pull up, I think router one should be online here. All right, a little connection refused because, whoops, sorry, because we've got to reset the console server. Let's check router eight, I think might help us out here no connection refuse let's check router nine and we might not be seeing this nope so we're not going to see it but anyway <clears throat> you can set the algorithm the hashing algorithm for the user to script right all right so here we are let's ping the TACAC server so do ping let's make sure we can reach that server and I think it's 192.168.2 uh, dot and I'm gonna have to go check here I think it's 22 and 32 yeah, 2.2 two and 3.2 respectively for the TAC axe and the radius server. All right, so we'll scroll down a little bit further here. And we're on part three. And there we go. And so we'll say 2.2. .2. So from router two, can I ping 2.2? .2? And as you can see there, we've got connectivity that's going to work great. So now we're going to open the TAC axe server up here. And we're looking at the services tab right here. And here is AAA. Now, here is where you define the device, the IP address of the device, and then the key, and this is not the key that the user is authentica authenticating with. This is the key that the device authenticates with to the TACAC server so that the TACAC server says, yes, this device is allowed to authenticate with me. It's down here where you define the username and password, and they just happen to be the same as the username and password that we configured on the router. However, when we're doing server-based, the username and password we type in is not being locally adjudicated. It's not being locally authenticated. It's going off the device. When we're doing server-based AAA, it goes off of router two, over to the TACAC server, and this is the information it's looking for, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to authenticate the user to this device right here, 192.168. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 192.168.2.1, which is router two. All right, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, let's go ahead and on router two, let's go ahead and create. Uh, user setup entry for admin two. We actually did that. All right, so we're down here on step three, and now we're going to configure the TACAX server specifics. Again, we haven't enabled AAA here yet, so let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and say TACAX dash server host, and then 192.168.2.2. And again, this is the statement we put on the router so that it knows what TACAX server am I going to for my authentication, right? For my TACAX functionality. And we need to authenticate that server, I'm sorry, the router to the server. And this is where that key value comes in of TACAX PA55. Let me make sure I spelled that right, TACAX PA55. Now, 
Again, a very timely note in this packet tracer activity. Those commands are deprecated. In other words, those commands tacax-server host and tacax-server key no longer exist. Again, those commands no longer exist. All right. Well, I'm gonna, let me pause here real quick and bring, let me get those uh, the real Cisco routers online so that we can actually see this. So let's pause. I'm going to be right back. All right. So we've got these two commands here. Again, I said these commands are deprecated. And let's go see what I'm talking about here. If we were to jump on to some real Cisco routers. So here we have router one. This is a 3945E. And it's running 15.7 code. So let's try to replicate those two commands, that tacax-server host and key, and see what we get here. So I'm going to say tacax-server. And if I do a question mark, you can see that the host and key options are no longer here. And that's what it means by deprecated. If I was to go back and even say AAA new model, right? So let's activate AAA and let's rerun that previous command. Oops, sorry, let's rerun that previous command by saying tacax server and do a question mark. They're still not there. If I was to go to an earlier release of the 15.x code, in fact, here it's 15.1m or 15.14, right? So here, if I go into global config, and I say AAA new model, and then I say, um, what was I thinking here? So let's say tacax server and do a question mark. You can see here in 15.1 code, the commands are still here, right? Or the options are still here for the tacax server. Now, Again, the reason you don't see it on 15.7 code is there's a new way to configure TACAX and RADIUS, right? We're going to define the servers using what we refer to as an address family style configuration. Now, at the CCNA level, you may not be familiar with address family. You'll see it a lot when you transition on to the CCMP level uh, because when you're dealing with OSPF, as well as EIGRP and BGP, the address family mode is exactly uh, what you're going to run into there. So uh, to take a step back here, so when I say tacax server and let's go ahead and put in the host 192.168.2.2. Now it usually takes it a second. Okay, good, right away. So you can see right here in 15.1 code, they're telling you that this CLI will be deprecated soon. Use the new server CLI. Well, we'll do that on router one, right? So we'll pop back over here to router one where those options aren't even available. And how would we create it now? And this is why it's a little bit confusing to users is the activity shows you how to use the old school way, giving you a note telling you, hey, this is deprecated, right? But they teach it to you anyway. And then uh, when we get to the radius server, you're going to see that we configure that sort of in the new school fashion. So here's how it works. You just leave the dash out. You say tacax server, and then you put the name of whatever you want the server to be. So if I was going to say, you know, tac underscore 01 for my, you know, tacax server number one, and I hit enter, we go into the sub configuration mode, and it's here where we do the address family setup. So I say, here's the address. The IPv4 address is going to be 192.168.2.2. And then I could even put in here if it's got an IPv6 address, right? And we're going to give that, you know, say it's 2001. Oops, sorry. We'll say 2001 colon DB8 colon, you know, 1 colon 1 colon colon 1. <coughs> Excuse me, and leave it at that. And then we would put our key in here, right? So I would put in here, let's say ABC123. Now, that's the definition of my first TACAX server. Now, usually you've got a couple TACAX boxes in case you have some sort of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Some sort of um, redundancy. Thank you. <laughs> redundancy is the word I'm looking for. If you wanted to have redundancy, well, in order to do that, you just simply create another TACAX server. So we're going to say TACAX server and then the name. We'll call it TAC underscore O2. And we'll run the same commands. Address family IPv4. And let's say it's 192.168.2.3. Right, and then we'll pull the IPv6 back up and say it's uh, one colon colon throw up, sorry, three. Right, I guess I'm just throwing some values in here. All right, so now if I say do show run and then include section tacax, 
uh, not TAC, X, sorry, I wanted um, <clears throat> section TACAX server, you can see that there are our servers and, oh, we forgot to put the key in here. So key ABC one, two, three, and there we go. So if I rerun the command, we should see, there we go. So we've got our definitions here and it's showing us the IPv6 information, which actually overwrote the IPv4 information. And if I wanted IPv4, I could put the IPv4 back on top of that. Again, if I was to say, you know, let's pull back the IPv4 command and then rerun the do show run. And there we go. Right. So you can see that we're allowed to have a single address. The key takeaway here is it's just basically TACAX space server. Now you name the servers, you put the address family information in there for whatever the case may be. And you put the key. Now here's how you create the group. And you do that by saying AAA group server. And what kind of a group is, oops, sorry. And let me make sure I get this right. AAA group. And I think we need TACAX. Oh, <laughs> so before we do that, AAA group, let's make sure. Yeah, there we go. AAA group server. I was in the sub configuration mode there and it wasn't gonna let me do that. So here's what we say. Is it gonna be LDAP servers we're using? Is it gonna be radius servers we're using? Or in this case, are we using TACAX plus? So I say group server TACAX plus, and here's where I put my TACAX underscore server underscore group. And I just put my name in here. And this is the group that I'm gonna be referring to in my method list for authentication. And we're gonna follow this all the way through. So now that we're in the sub configuration, this is where I just simply put in here, server name, I could put the IP, but we gave them names for a reason. I'll say TAC underscore 01, TAC underscore 02. Now watch what happens when I say TAC underscore 03. I think this takes a second or two because I think it tries to um, sort it out but it, it can't find it, right? So we get the syslog warning server TAC03 not defined, right? So it's gonna let you know if you're putting the wrong name in there or the name for a TACAC server you haven't defined yet. But now we've got this group of TACAC servers. So we would then go ahead and say AAA authentication login. And I'm gonna put down, let's say if it's, you know, con underscore AAA underscore login. That's my custom name. And what is the list of methods we're going to use? Okay, well, let's try, um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can see we could use the line password for authentication, but we're not gonna do that. So I could say group TACAX plus, and then I could say group, well, let's check radius servers because maybe I've got a group of radius servers that I've defined, right? And this is how you refer to those groups. You say group TACAX plus, and it knows that we created, up, oh, oops, sorry, I don't wanna go too far, that we created this triple A TACAX plus server group, right? And so then that's gonna be the first method we try to use to authenticate. Then we're gonna check our radius server group. If that doesn't work, uh, then let's say I'm going to try the enable password. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to try, you know, uh, let's do Kerberos 5, KRB 5. And then I could say, well, let's use local and make it case sensitive so that the the uh, usernames need to be case sensitive. If that doesn't work, uh, then maybe I go fall back all the way to the line, right? And it looks like we had an issue there. And let me just go ahead and pull this all back here and we'll leave it with the enable. And there we go. Whoops, sorry. So now if I was to say do do show run, do show run include TACAX, you can see that there is our TACAX server group and that's the name of the group. Here's our AAA authentication, right? For logging into this device on what is ultimately gonna be the console line. And then the final thing that I would do is say line con zero and I'm going to say, uh, sorry, yeah, we're going to do login, authentication, and here's where I put in that custom name, con AAA underscore login. Now, if I was to log off this device, there's a chance I could end up not being able to get back on here. So I'm going to hit enter, and that's it. That's what we would need to do, right? Now, I'm not going to save this configuration. I'm simply going to go ahead and reload this router. That way, all of that stuff gets wiped out, right? Because we don't want to lock ourselves off of the router. Again, I didn't, I don't think I created the local user account. And so the final thing that we're going to take a look at is that script command that I talked to you about earlier when you go to create the username, right? And think, speaking of creating usernames, so here let's just say username admin and I'll do a question mark. 
And there it is, the third option right here. Al Oops, sorry, it moved on me. Algorithm type. So let's see what that does for us when I say algorithm type and I do a question mark. And there's the script option, right? And we are going to use, you know, I'll just say ABC123. And there we go. And so that is how you use the script algorithm. In fact, if I say do show run and pipe this to include username, you will see that this is far more complex than what we see when we have MD5. And right there, it tells us, you know, it tells us right here with the nine, but that is a type nine. Script is type nine, right? SHA-256 is type eight and MD5 is simply type five. So if I was to say, you know, username Bob, you know, secret ABC123, and then let's rerun that command here. You can clearly see how much more complex the script password or the script hashing algorithm is when compared to our type five MD5 passwords, right? So just to, you know, want to touch on that just briefly here. All right. So let me now go ahead and uh, jump back into the activity and let's wrap this up again. We've covered the difference here, right? Is that, you know, these are deprecated. It would have been nice maybe to continue the note, give you the new way to do it. All right, so we're gonna enable AAA on router two, and this is gonna be C-I-S-C-O-P-A uh, or E-N-P-A 55. There we go. Let's get into global config. Let's say AAA new model. So AAA has been enabled. We're gonna configure all logins to authenticate using the AAA TACAX plus server. If not available, right? Here's where we add methods to the list in this activity. If I can't reach the TACAC server, and this is important, it's not that I go to the TACAC server and authentication fails. That is a different event than trying to reach the TACAC server and it's unreachable. If an unreachable comes back, then I move on to the next method in the list. If it comes back and it's denied, that it doesn't authenticate properly, that's it. I then do not move on to the next method in the list. So it's just like an ACL, right? The first entry that gets matched, that's the action that's gonna be taken, whether it's permit, deny, whatever the case may be. The same is true here. If I try to authenticate to the TACAC server and it denies the authentication, meaning the packet reached the server and a response came back saying denied, that's it, authentication's over. It is not gonna then go down the method list looking at the local user database or the enable password or Kerberos 5 or whatever may follow. If it's denied, it's denied, you're done. If it's unreachable, then it moves on. If it can't get to the TACAC server, then it's going to move on to the next method in the list. And I have to stress that because this causes a lot of confusion where learners think, oh, well, the TACAC server denied it, then it just goes to the next method in the list. No, you're done right there. It is not gonna then go try to authenticate you through all these other uh, methods in the list. It's done, right? If it's, it, it's if it can't reach the server and you get a unreachable that comes back, then it moves on in the list. So let's continue on here. So we're gonna go ahead and say AAA, authentication to get logged in. Now I'm gonna use default. It doesn't say uh, for the name, it doesn't say to use anything specific, but we're changing the default here, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say group TACAX. Remember it wants to use wants us to try to use the TACAX server first. If it's not available, then use the local database. And if that wasn't available, we could say use the enable password, or we could say use another group, or we could say none. All right, so this should get us a, a few points here. We're at 76%, now we're at 80. And that takes care of step number four. Now we're on to step number five. In fact, I think it just took care of step number five. Oh, configure AAA authentication for the console login to use the default AAA authentication method. So that validates that the name should be default. Well, let's say do show run. And let's look here again, there's a line password that's been configured. So I'm gonna say line con zero, we're gonna say no password, Cisco con PA 55. We're not gonna need that anymore. And we're not putting that method in the list. So there's no need 
to have that here, right? So we'll say no password, Cisco con PA55. And uh, let's then go ahead and say login, authentic, sorry, authentication and default. All right, so now let's validate that this actually works. And this is step number six. We're verifying that we can get into user exec mode. And let's go ahead and say write mem. And we're gonna exit out. So now when I hit enter, we see the password or the username prompt and then followed by the password prompt. This is gonna be admin2, the username that we created earlier. And it's admin2pa55. And there we go. We Oops, sorry, we're now back on router two. What about the enable password? Still working, Cisco ENPA55. And there you have it. So everything working as we would expect. So that finishes up step six. We're done on router two. Let's save our config just one more time to be sure. And then let's pop over here onto router number three, where we're gonna be working with the radius server. Now the configuration is almost identical with the exception that when we say AAA authentication, login, default group, we don't say TACAX plus, we simply say radius. And then we're probably gonna say local as well just in case. So we're on uh, router three. Let's get into privilege exec because we're gonna have to be here soon. Cisco ENPA 55. And let's do a quick ping test here to get to the 192.168.3. And I think it's dot two. Let's go up here and double check that. Uh, where's the radius server is 3.2. So we're good there. And you can see connectivity is working. So let's get into global config. And again, we're setting this account up here as a fail safe so that if something goes wrong with the radius server, we forget the password that was configured on the radius server for authentication, that we could simply you know, unplug the device or cut it off from communication to the radius server so that we get the unreachable back, then we could log in with the local user database account. All right. so. Uh, we're here on, uh, oh, I'm sorry, admin. So we're going to say username admin three, and it wants us to use the secret password of admin three PA 55. And that's fine. Again, remember you'd want to use script if it's available. Uh, here we're good with this. And now we're going to verify the radius server configuration. So again, just a quick look here to see that we've got all these services here. Let's take a look at AAA. There is the device that is going to be authenticating to the Radius server and the credentials that would be used that we are gonna be configuring with that uh, sort of, the, they show you the new way to do it here with the Radius space server. Or I believe that's what they're gonna show us. We're gonna, we'll check it when we get there. And then here is the username that's going to be authenticated as well. Admin three and admin three PA 55. All right, so on router three, we need to set the device up so that it's going to be able to authenticate itself and be able to use the radius server. So how do we do that? So here you can see it says, Packet Tracer does not correctly score correctly score the configuration using the radius da I'm sorry, radius space server command. So we have to use that command because let's let's take a look here how they've got this set up. It looks like they're transitioning because you can see when I type, uh, well. Let's first turn on AAA new model, and that's why we didn't see the command there. So when I say radius and do a question mark, even if I come back here and do a question mark, you can see there is no radius dash server command here. So it looks like they're kind of, you know, in mid flight here of maybe updating so that the radius uses the new way to do the configuration, but the TACAX doesn't yet, and maybe they're working on that for a future release of, of uh, Cisco Packet Tracer. So here we do the new configuration syntax. We say radius server, and then we give a name for the server. And what are we going to call it? It's going to be rad dash server. Again, this is exactly how I showed you how to do the TACAX config on a real Cisco router. And now it drops us into the sub configuration mode where we say address and is it going to be in here? It's only IPv4 and the server's 192.168.3.2. Again, this is the IPv4 address of that radius server. And what is the key? Well, the key is, what is the key? And I forget the key already. I think it's, is it radius? What was the key? Let's make sure we get this right. Yeah, radius PA 55. So let's put the right key in here. Radius PA 55. 
Uh, and again, that's fine. We're going to see these messages here. And now let me exit out of the sub configuration mode. So we're at 92%. And obviously we still got a little bit of work to do. So what did we do? We configured the AAA radius server IP address and secret key on router three. And hold on one second here. Radius, let me make sure server rad server key. Yeah, okay, so I, I was thinking maybe you could put secret but or script or whatever. There was some option there, but there's not. All right, and so now we've got that done. We've enabled AAA on router three and configure all logins to authenticate using the AAA radius server. If it's not available, use the local database. So we're gonna have multiple methods in our list in order to authenticate using AAA. So configure the line console to use the defined method. And it's funny, it says configure AAA, or it says configure all logins and I guess that's not meaning the VTY lines, only the console line, but we'll find out here in just one second. So here we are in global config. AAA has been enabled. The radius space server command has been used. They don't have us create a group, um, and that's okay. So, and it's, in fact, is that even uh, an option here? So AAA group isn't even an option here. Authentication, yeah, so it's not even an option here. So they're just gonna go off the single server and let's go ahead and say AAA authentication login default and let me make sure that it's the default that we're going to be using here and so we're going to say group and this is where we say radius and then we say local so we're at 92 percent we should find out right away if default is what they wanted us to use yeah default AAA authentication and now we bump up to 96 percent all right, well, now that we've got the AAA new model turned on, the radius server defined, we've got our method list, the default method list, we've changed so that it's now group radius as the first method in the list, followed by the local user database, if and only if the radius server is unreachable. If the radius server declines or denies the authentication, we then don't just don't move on to the local user database, right? Okay. Uh, and so then again, it's going to be line con zero. And my guess is do show run section line con zero that we've got this password here, Cisco uh, con PA 55. And again, we're not using the line password in our method list. So we don't need the line password configured here. So we can pull that off. And this is where we're going to say login authentication. Let's spell authentication right and simply default. And this should bump us to 100%. And it does. Let's save the config here with a write mem and let's validate that this works. So let me log off. Let's try to log in. Admin 3, admin 3 PA 55. Did we hit the radius server? We did. Does the enable password still work? Cisco EN PA 55 and it does. All right, well, that is going to do it for this activity. Let's real quickly here talk about TACAX Plus. Cisco proprietary, other vendors use it. Juniper uh, supports TACAX Plus. Uh, and remember, it's for network device access. That's where TACAX Plus really shines because the authentication, the authorization, and the accounting are all separate entities when you work with TACAX Plus. TACAX Plus uses TCP. Radius uses UDP. TACAX Plus is Cisco proprietary. Radius is open source. Radius is more for network access control. Like, oh, are you coming in on an iPad with this iOS version uh, and this device type? And that's more of sort of the secure network access control, where Cisco TACAX is more about device access, right? Like device access control, controlling who can log into the devices. Now, Radius and TACX Plus, you know, as you see here, they both do basic um, network device access control, right? However, TACX separates AAA up into individual services, which is advantageous, gives you more granular control, um, and it, in, it encrypts the entire packet. Radius only encrypts the password. So that's another advantage of TACAX Plus. Now, where can you get TACAX Plus? Well, it used to be on ACS servers until ICE 2.0, the Identity Services Engine. So now TACAX is supported on Identity Services Engines, right? So you can use ICE in order to 
uh, do this. Again, ACS, I believe, is all end of life, end of support, end of sale. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that is, we, we've been doing the old model. Now we're doing the new model using AAA. So that is going to wrap up this Packet Tracer tutorial and video on activity 22.2.1, configuring AAA authentication on Cisco routers. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.